In this presentation, we'll show how to make surface and contour plots in Excel. We will use the electric potential of a single charge as our example. We are going to plot a function that depends on both x and y, but first we are responsible for generating the x and y values. We're going to let both variables x and y range from minus 0 0.1 to plus 0.1. So in cell B1, we're going to start with minus 0 0.1, just enter that number. And then in cell C1, we'll enter the formula equals B1 plus 0 0.005. And then we're going to take that formula in C1 and copy it across the first row until we get to the cell AP. And in AP, our result should have a value of 0 0.1, positive 0 0.1 in this case. So and make sure you note that that's AP and not just P. Next, we are going to generate the y values we need. So this time we will start in cell A2 with a positive 0 0.1. And then in cell A3, enter the formula equals A2 minus 0 0.005. And then we are going to copy that formula in A3 down until we get to cell A42, at which point it should have a value of minus 0 0.1. Now that we've generated a grid of x and y values, we are ready to enter the formula to calculate the electric potential at all of these x, y points. So we will start in cell B2 and we will enter the formula equal 0 0.2 divided by the square root SQRT open parenthesis of B dollar sign 1 carat 2 plus dollar sign A2 carat 2 close parenthesis. This is the formula for the electric potential when the charge happens to be 2.224 times 10 to the minus 11th coulomb. It doesn't uh, really matter. It doesn't pertain to any particular situation. Uh, but what it does is conveniently, there's a kq in the formula for the electric potential, and it just conveniently makes kq equal to 0 0.2. It gives it a nice value. So a little explanation about this formula. So the formula for a charge is kq divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared to the one half. Remember that raising to the power of one half is the same as square root. And we set kq, we conveniently set to be 0.2. So then b dollar sign one is playing the role of x and dollar sign a2 is playing the role of y in the formula. In a general three-dimensional space, we might also have a z in there, but for convenience, we're going to say that we're just looking at points in an xy plane and z is always going to be zero. The dollar signs are absolute addressing. So the dollar signs tell you what is not going to change. So whatever follows dollar sign in an Excel formula, when that formula is copied to other cells, the thing following the dollar sign does not change. So when B dollar sign one is copied across a row, the B may change to a C, may change to a D, but that one is not going to change if the formula gets copied down. And so we will always remain uh, and referring to the first row. So the X's will always be referring to that first row of the X's that we generated. Similarly, the dollar sign A2, when it is copied, the dollar, the A, because the dollar sign is in front of it, the A will not change, but the two will change to three, to four, to five. And so we will always remain in that first column where we generated the Y's. So after entering the formula in that first cell, we are going to copy it down. First, copy the formula down to cell B42. So we're going to highlight the formula, get the fill handle, what I call the thin black cross in the corner, and then copy down to 
cell B42, this copies the formula down that B column. And then when we have that done, then we're going to continue to copy this time across and we're going to copy till we get to A42. And then, you know, if you're following along, you should get the same values you see in the picture to the left. We are going to make two types of chart from this data. First is a surface chart. So first we're going to go back and going to highlight all the data, not just the formula, but also the original X and Y values. So from A1 all the way down to AP42. Then we're going to go on the menu to insert and then on that little uh, arrow icon under the charts and go to see all the charts and that will bring up a dialog box on that, we're going to hit an All Charts tab, and then we're going to look on the uh, left-hand side and find the surface chart. And then when we have that all done, then we will click OK. The formula actually goes to infinity at 0, 0. And so the resulting plot has a very sharp spike at the point x, y equals 0, 0. But we want to display some of the other behavior of the chart in other regions. And so we're going to format the vertical axis. So right click on the vertical axis, also known as the Z axis, and choose format axis from the context sensitive menu. On the format axis pane that slides out from the right, we are going to set the minimum to zero, the maximum to 10, the major unit to one, and the minor unit to a half. Now we see we're sort of on the outer edges of the spike before it really gets to spike up quite high. We can do some formatting, say under quick layout number four, I can move the legend which was going across the bottom over to the right hand side, for instance. So here's our results so far. The position along this Z axis that the height represents the size of the electric potential at a point R equals x, y. And the volcano-like shape that you see, the, that cutoff at 10, that's not a real feature of the electric potential for a single positive charge. Rather, it's cut off like that because that's what we told Excel to do. We told Excel to make a maximum of 10 so that the actual function continues to rise, but we just decided not to view it. If you want a copy of the surface plot, this volcano plot, then you'd better sort of copy and paste it now because next we are going to change that same plot now into a contour plot. So with the graph highlighted, we will go back to the insert menu, back to the see all charts little arrow icon, bring up the uh, chart dialog box, make sure we're on the all charts tab, we're still going to be down in surface, but this time instead of choosing one of the surface plots, we're going to move over and choose the wireframe contour plot. This wireframe contour plot gives us what are called equipotential surfaces. So recall that what we are plotting in this case was the electric potential. And so equipotential means uh, points or surfaces or, or lines which have the same equal potentials. And so the innermost circle got a little bit jagged looking in Excel, but it should be a circle, is all the XY points that have a potential of 10 volts. Then the next innermost circle is all the XY points which have nine volts and so on. So we did not make this wire contour plot from scratch, but rather we made it from the surface plot because we had in the surface plot, we had a Z axis which we could easily right click on and then choose to format it. So we chose these levels of one volt, two volt, three volts, up to 10 volts. That, that was our choice on the Z axis formatting. 
that's much more difficult to access if you go straight to the wireframe contour plot. So it's much easier if you work your way through the surface plot and then to the wireframe equipotential surface version of the plot.